In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your featherweight motor from this to this. Now that we have cleaned all of the parts for our motor, we're ready to reassemble it. Let's go over really quick everything that you should have before you start. And I'm just going to go from right to left here. We have two brushes, and if these were too short, if they were too worn, you should have replaced them with new ones. This is the shield. It goes around the outside of the motor once you put it together. I believe they call it the field core shield. We have the end cover. This one is the one that the pulley will come out of. The second end cover is attached by wires to the actual field core. You should have this in one big piece. You have the armature with your hopefully nice and shiny commutator on one end. You should have your pulley and the little set screw that fixes it to the shaft. Two caps, brush caps, a screw and a washer to mount the motor back to the machine. We won't be mounting it yet today. We'll do that when we do all the other wiring, but you should have this. A number of little washers, and we're going to talk about those when we put them back on two bolts. This is what holds the motor together. And finally, these are new grease wicks that I have loaded up with grease and I actually heat this up and it helps the grease sort of absorb into the new wicks before I put them back into the motor. These I may have to trim a little bit shorter, but I'd rather start on the longer side. These are the old ones that I decided not to soak or anything because I know how to replace them. So I'm just going to toss these now. And finally, the two little springs. These are what go back into the grease port. You have one for each port on the machine. We'll put this in first and then we'll put in the wick. Tool wise, Tweezers are going to be handy. Screwdrivers. You'll need a smaller one for the pulley when you attach that little set screw back in the pulley. And finally, I might be using my little dental pick too when I'm putting these springs and grease wicks back in. And that's actually where we're going to start. Oh, one other thing. This is some heat shrink tubing. I did not keep that cloth cover that was on these two wires going from the motor to inside the machine. So I'm going to put just a very short piece on up close to kind of help where it feeds through the machine. This piece is really long enough. Sometimes I do a little bit longer, but I'll be putting this on as well since I tossed the crumbly covering from before. So we're gonna take the pulley end cover and we're going to start by putting that spring back inside the grease port and it's going to take a little bit of patience and trial and error a lot of times i find it helps to just kind of squish it flat and i'm just trying to kind of pinch it in i have my finger on the bottom side and I've got the spring press between the, the cover and my finger, and I can see it here in the hole. Now I'm going to grab part of that spring, and I'm going to kind of try to push it into the hole where the grease port is. I'm going to keep doing that until I get it all the way in. Just like that. I don't want to see any of that spring sticking out because it should not be touching the shaft. Actually, it'll be this end. 
So make sure it's good and tucked inside and you can't see it anymore. So now the spring is in. So now we can add the wick. And since I already know this one is just a little bit long, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off what I think needs to come off. That's probably a little bit better size. So the process is the same and you are going to get grease in places that you don't really want it, but you can always clean that up. I'm gonna bring it up through the bottom and then I'm gonna use my little tool to just feed it in. And now it's back inside the hole. So it's okay if that wick pokes out just a little bit because it needs to come in contact with the end of the shaft. But if it pokes out too far, you'll have trouble putting your motor back together and fitting everything tight. So if you can see that, see the grease wick right inside the hole there? It's that light colored circle. That's what you want. So look, that didn't go so bad. Let's do the other one while we're at it and get the greasy part out of the way. Clean off the inside if you get grease anywhere. One done. Okay. This one's a little bit trickier because you don't want to be pulling on these wires, but we're basically going to do sort of the same thing. I always try pinching it together, but if that doesn't work, just slide it down into the hole, have your finger on the underside to catch the spring to keep it from falling all the way through. And then let's see, I need to turn this this way. It's easier for me to work in this direction. And I'm just taking the spring and tucking it into the hole. And it's almost in. Make sure I cannot see it. I can still see the copper just a little bit. Don't want to see it at all. And once I put the wick in, that might help push it back a little bit further, but I really want to make sure it's pushed in far enough. Now my grease wick. I'm actually just going to drop it this way. I can feel it with my finger from the bottom. And I'm just going to take that grease wick. And you know what? I didn't trim this one, so we'll see if it's too long. We'll know pretty quick. No, it's good. There. Can you see the grease wick right inside the hole there? So the second one is in. And mostly what I see inside that hole is just some grease that's collected. So clean my hands off, clean the grease off. And then I might just check in here too. Make sure that there's no extra grease. Okay, so grease wicks are back in. Not so bad. And I can set this aside. So next we want to put the armature back inside the field core. And we need to remember making sure I didn't have any grease on my fingers that got on the commutator. Hopefully your commutator polished up nicely. When I was looking at some of the diagrams that Singer provided, it was interesting because they do not show any of these washers on the commutator end on any of the diagrams that I have. But I know when I took this apart, I had one. So, I'm putting one back on the end. I'm just going to do it like I found it. When we go to put this together, 
you're going to want to first sort of press the field core down into the bottom cover. And you're going to want to check out inside. You're going to want to check out inside to make sure that none of the wires that are going from the brush housings are actually sticking out anywhere where they might rub against the commutator once it's down inside the end cap. Then once you see, you need to make sure it's firmly pressed together. Do you see right here? That is flush. It is as far as it will go. Okay, so it's together. I'm going to kind of pull apart right here just to give it some space. And my washer is still on the end of my commutator. I'm going to slide it right down inside. And it's going to pop into the hole. just like that. And it pushed right past my grease wick. So that grease wick wasn't sticking out too far to keep it from sliding in. Once I have them together, I'm going to go ahead and kind of push these back together. And then while I kind of hold this all together, I'm going to make sure that this spins. If it doesn't, it's catching on something and you did something wrong but this spins just fine. It's not rubbing against anything. That's good. So now we can do the next step. These other washers in the diagram that I was looking at, the notes actually show that what goes on first is a paper washer and then a fiber washer. And I'm assuming that this one just by how it feels would be the paper. And then I have two more. One is a bit thinner. It's not like metal, but it's not like paper. And I'm guessing that would have been the fiber. I'm not sure. And then I have this thicker one. And actually when I took it apart, the thicker one is the one that was on first. I'm going to put the fiber one on first. I don't know, you know, why they were in a different order, but I'm just going to put it on closer to the order that the diagram said they should be in, but I'm still going to put all three back on since I had three when I started. Now, we can go ahead and actually put the other end cap on. And you want to find, so you know which direction it goes. First of all, sorry, you wanna put your band on. And the, <laughs> this part is kind of tricky, but it's the motor's going to sit on your machine like this. So these wires are coming out this way and into the machine. That means that when you look at the shield, it needs to be positioned with the red S facing out and the lettering on the top. So I'm just going to work that on now so it's not upside down later. Then we have to take everything apart. So that's on. I could still spin it. Now, the grommet here on the pulley end cap is going to be pointing down also. It's going to match up with these wires. And I need to carefully feed both wires through. I will put the heat shrink tubing on after. So, one wire through the grommet. Be, be very gentle pushing these through. 
You don't want to snap them off. Followed by the second one. It's a little bit tighter than the first one. Almost through. If I can grab it and carefully pull, now I should be able to push it. Just about. This one's harder than putting the grease wicks back in. I'm going very gentle here, just so you know. Don't want to break the connections. Almost. See, so don't pull on this. Just push. There we go. Now I have something I can grab other than this. I'm grabbing the cloth covering. And look at that, it's still crumbling off. So now give these wires a tug. And the way we want everything to line up is with this grommet where this little knot is in the wires. Make sure that that knot is snug, not loose. And then you're going to start pulling at your wires, but you need enough slack. Check to make sure your little washers are still on to fit together the cap onto the end of the shaft. Now you're going to start taking away your slack and slowly bringing this together. If you do it too quick, you'll have wires pinched in a weird place and this will not spin freely. So see like now, I can't turn it with my fingers hardly at all anymore. That's because I have probably too much slack on the inside, it's getting a little bit better. And it's rubbing up against something. Now it spins freely. So I'm just gonna check one more time to make sure I've got everything out of the way. I'm gonna give it a little twist and this bends very freely. So I have pulled these wires far enough out of the way that they're not pinching against the armature and stopping it from spinning. So the first time that I ever put a motor back together for a featherweight, that was what I was doing wrong. And it would spin fine until I got it nice and firmly together and then it would stop. I had too much of this wire on the inside and it was actually pressing up against that armature and keeping it from spinning. So now that we have this all back together and everything is spinning properly, the next thing we want to do is screw it back together. So you have two screws and these I had to clean up the heads a little bit. They were really mangled but they're not sharp to the touch anymore, so they'll be fine. They're not as pretty as they used to be, but they still work. So now's when you can start screwing these down. And if you feel like you're turning the screw and you're turning the screw and nothing's happening, like it's not grabbing, it's because you have something 
a little crooked and you just need to kind of hold both ends of the motor and kind of twist it and wiggle it until you can get both screws to go into the hole and catch. And this one was fine. So I'm just going to tighten these down. I need a heftier screwdriver though. One and two. And I can still spin the armature inside. This is back together. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach the pulley back. <laughs> now it's easy to put this on the wrong way. And I want you to look at something. When you slide this on, the hole for the set screw should be pointing out because if you put it on the other way it's going to be hard to screw it in but also the belt's not going to line up with this groove right here another thing i did oil my parts pre-filming but you do not want to put oil in here you don't want to get oil on your belts really ever it can cause issues with slipping and stuff so i only oiled the ends and where I was going to screw in the set screw, but keep oil out of this part. So we're just gonna slide this on and turn it so your flat spot is pointing where you can see it. And I think it's easier personally to actually start this set screw before I slide the pulley on. And that is just a preference thing, but I'll show you why you can go ahead and start it. My son got me a new little set of screwdrivers for Christmas. I would say he knows me very well. Okay, so I'm not putting it all the way through. See, you don't see the set screw poking through the center, but I see my flat spot and I know where my set screw is. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> see? this way i can slide the pulley on and just by turning it this way i can line my set screw up with my flat spot so it's okay to start it it's much easier to start it pre sliding your pulley on and then you just tighten it down and you can see how nice it lined up and just make sure it's good and snug okay and testing <laughs> it spins so now we can go ahead and let's get this out of the way now we can go ahead and put the brushes back into the motor and remember how I showed you the curve in the brush. So our commutator is a circle in here. Picture this circle right here. The curve in your brush, do you see? Let's make sure we point this out. Do you see this has a curve? I'm trying to get it to focus. There's a curve there. There is not a curve this way. That means that this curve set on the commutator like that. So when I put it back in, I'm going to match that curve. And it doesn't matter which hole you do first, but with the curve lined up so it's matching the curve of the commutator, just going to drop that brush right back in. And then you're going to take your brush cap and this is finger tighten only. Just go ahead and spin it down. You can use a screwdriver, but you're just only going to make sure it's snug. Don't twist it really hard. So next brush, this is the curve of the commutator. 
I have the curve of the brush matching and it's going right inside the hole. And my brush cap can go on. And I'm just making sure, and that's it. <laughs> it's back together. And look, it's gonna sit on the machine. The S is right. The letters are at the top. The pulley spins freely. And I will do this when I put the motor back on but even though I grease my wicks, I'm still going to fill up the grease ports at some point with grease, especially since these are new wicks because there's the other one, because um, they're new and I wanna make sure there's plenty of grease. I'm going to put this aside where I don't lose it for when I'm ready to mount the motor. All I have left to do is either, if you have the cloth sheath, you're going to work that back on or in my case, I'm going to put the heat shrink tubing on. Almost. Again, you never want to grab these rings and pull. Bad idea. There we go. So I'm going to slide this all the way down up to about the rubber grommet and then I will use the I will use heat to shrink this down later off camera because I'll be playing with some fire. So anyway, that's it. That's how you reassemble the motor. Now you can set this aside and when we're ready, we'll go ahead and put it back into the machine and that's when we'll rewire the the light and the plug and all of that so if you got this far good job when we come back i think we're going to go ahead and reinstall the feed regulator and the reason why i'm going that way is i do have something to rewire on my light switch and i want to do that before I show you how to reinstall it. So we'll see you again real soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.